Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. So, <clears throat> this is a look at my space program. So up here we've got, these are my toolbars. Uh, this just shows I've got an update. This shows me how the life support system is going to work. That's a mod. I have, I'm not even going to point the mods out anymore. I'm just going just gonna to go. But uh, this is the astronaut complex. going to hire all the astronauts because it doesn't cost me anything to do that because I haven't implemented that code yet. And I'm going to go to the flagpole to make the flagpole really hard to click on I'm going to choose a flag and I'm going to choose this flag so you are, it's flying the flag of the, actually no, I'm, I'm KASA there we go, I'm CASA, the Kerbal uh, Air and Space Agency so we go to the research and development screens to see what I've managed to unlock we started off with just capsules and fuel tanks so enough to get up into orbit, but then yeah, you got to come back down, and it's kind of annoying. Then we got basic rocketry, uh, which is just a lot of fuel tanks. But we do have these uh, mystery goo that allows us to do research on various biomes and areas, so near orbit, low orbit areas of the planet. Uh, survivability gives us life support cans, which lets us have enough food and or air and water to keep our astronauts alive, that's a mod. Uh, better parachutes and better engines and landers. We have a bit of aerodynamics and stability that allows us to steer the craft and discharge stuff so we can mount stuff on the side of the craft. And we have basic rocket engines here, these are partially modded. And they give us um, more advanced engines and they give us these little separatrons and solid boosters and they're really important, they let us get rockets into space more easily. So we're going to go to space today. Currently I don't have any missions flying um, I've recently just started. So we've got an untitled spacecraft, I'm going to recover that because it hasn't gone anywhere and done anything. So this is the planet Kerbin, this is where our little Kerbals live. Uh, with some beautiful, take the grid off, so it's quite a beautiful place very green. Kerbal, Kerbin's got two moons, Moon and Minmus. Minmus is further out, it's in an eccentric orbit, uh, which ideally costs more delta V uh, fuel direction to get there, but because it's so far out, once you get free from Kerbin, the gravity, the, sorry, the uh, thrust adjustments to get over there are really, really tiny. And the planet is so small that, zoom into it, Come here, Minmus. This planet is so, this moon rather, so tiny that it takes very little energy to get back off the planet and get back to get back home. The only problem is that the planet is so rugged, which means if you come into a land badly and you don't hit one of these plateaus, you're basically going to smash into the surface and tip over, which happened on one of my last expeditions. That's all I'm going to show you for this bit, but there is a, actually, I'll go back in and I'll show you the whole solar system. There is a whole solar system waiting to be seen there. This is the tracking station I'm going into, by the way. Just Ideally, would show all of my flights. You'd get a lot of these ghost lines showing where my satellites and vehicles were, but I don't have them in it. Uh, this is an updated skybox. All this colourful um, space. Lovely, beautiful space. So getting out, that's Kerbin. We have uh, Eve and its moon Gilly. Uh, Eve is a Venus analog, very heavy gravity, very thick atmosphere, hard to land and then get back off of. It actually takes more energy to get off Eve than it does to get off our home planet, which means that it's kind of hard mode if you want to land people and land Kerbals and then get them back off again. Moho is the Mercury analog. It's very small, low energy to get off that. Uh, getting to it is easy and hard. Your transfer window comes up quite frequently. You can slingshot around the sun but it is a very small planet with a weak gravity and it doesn't have an atmosphere so you can't use the atmosphere to slow yourself down which you can't do on Eve and Kerbin. Duna is the, moo the Mars analogue it has its own little moon called Ike which isn't like anything in the solar system, it's not Deimos or Phobos, it's just a lump of rock. Uh, that gets in the way a lot when you're trying to come in. Duna has an atmosphere, it's quite thin but you can air a break when you come in to get around it and that again costs you less energy. Uh, after Duna we have Drez. Drez is sort of a... it's a lump. Ah, Drez is kind of boring 
but it occupies a, a same sort of thing that um not Eris, Cerise does in the asteroid belt. Uh, it's a planet that's quite far out. So you'll see you've got clustering up here, everything, and then we've got Drez here. This is Jewel. Jewel is the one gas giant. There's going to be another two added. Jewel is a very pretty planet, very green, very soothing, but it has one, two, three, four, five moons. Now, when you're coming in, this is a bit of a liability because it can throw your uh, orbits off quite easily. But it's got a lot of useful places to land. Paul, Bob, Tallow. most of these are pretty lousy. Lathe has an atmosphere, which means it's easy to slow down on it. And lastly, we have Elu. Elu was added fairly recently. It's essentially Pluto. It's at quite an eccentric orbit. It's really, really far out. It's really, really small. Um, so, spoiler, it's very difficult to get out here. It's a very cold planet, I think, if actually if we look. Um, we don't have an atmosphere, so it doesn't actually tell us that much about whether or not... It's, yeah, it's a joke about Pluto there. Uh, gravity and escape velocity. The escape velocity of 841 is really high for its size. Um, if you, it's uh, mass. Mass is quite high. Its area is um, 5 to the power of 11. Now, this is quite small, but it's quite dense, and it's going at quite a speed. Its rotational period is 5 hours. That's not the solar rotational period. Okay, it's, it's, it's rotation. Let me just check, because I know Kerbin's. Rotation period. Six hours exactly, yep. That's the um, uh, day-night cycle. So 12 till 12 at the same time next day. Six hours. So it's, Kerbin rotates quite, fit, quite quite quickly. All of these numbers are um, much, much less than real life. Kerbin is a very small planet. Its mass is about the fifth of Earth, its area is a lot smaller. Uh, this is about the uh, radius, equatorial radius of the moon. So Kerbin is about the size of our moon. So it's just to make all the maths easier because NASA has big teams and Kerbin has me, and I am not a very good mathematician. So there's that. Um, that's our space command. I have a mod on. That means that unless you can see that red dot and draw a line of sight to it, you can't talk to central control, which means that if I launch an unmanned probe and it goes over here, the planet gets in the way and Kerbin can't talk to them anymore. So I've really got a 60 degree cone coming out from the planet here, which is actually an active window. If I put a satellite around about here, um, Geostationary orbit is uh, it's about two million miles, two million meters up. So if I put a satellite here and it was hovering constantly, it means if I was over here, say, I could draw a line of sight to that and bounce it back. But it's really, really fiddly to do that, so I haven't yet, never managed it. Uh, you've got to get the rotational period to six hours, uh, which is a slight faff, quite a faff. Otherwise, I would have done it. So let's build a rocket. I have some mods on that make uh, the capsule really interesting and we can try them out together like a family. So uh, let's put some tanks on. So we'll put this solid fuel, fuel booster on, put a liquid engine on. So this engine's got uh, an ISP. Uh, under under engine, you'll see it's got a maximum thrust of 20,000 newton, 200 newtons, sorry, 200 kilonewtons. The engine ISP is 320 at sea level and 370 at vacuum. Uh, ISP is a measure of how efficient the engine is in turning fuel into propulsion. The higher the number, the better. It means you need less fuel to get more thrust. If I've got another sample one, uh, the Poodle engine. Oh, I call it the Poodle Engine. The liquid fuel engine here is 300 over 390. So terrible, uh, small, less less engine efficiency at sea level, but more efficient in a vacuum. But its maximum thrust is about a uh, four quarter of it. You've got gimbling. That means that the nozzle, the nozzle here can turn. This one doesn't. Yeah, this one gimbals. So 
we can see how they'll model it on the engine that this silver bit, the engine will throttle around that. All the rest of this is just uh, cosmetic. But we'll see the engine. It's only got about a point half a degree, which is, yeah, this has got a full degree actually, uh, which is enough to steer me while I'm taking off. And then I'll add, uh, if I've got any science that I can do. Oh, I've got a lot of science stuff now, but the problem with the science stuff is, see, that's got a mass of 500, that's 0.15, that's 150 kilograms. Now, the more I add, the less my delta V will be. I'll grab a chip. Okay, so this is my flight engineer. I've currently got a delta V of 1,934. That's, I can make a total course correction of 1,934 meters a second. The escape velocity for Kerbin, if you recall from the previous screen, is about 3,000, which means you need 3,000 delta Vs to counteract gravity and get out of the gravity well. And then you need further delta V to actually circularize your orbit around the planet, which you've got to think up. This does some of the heavy lifting, so I don't actually have to manually work out the delta V for the craft, which is great because I could not be chewed to do that. So I've got a couple of science experiments. I'm going to slap one on the top here. I'm going to give it, actually, make sure it has a safe landing. So I'll need to make sure it lands. Now, I don't actually have to burn any retros to land on this planet because it's got a lovely atmosphere. It's got one of the thickest in the solar system. So I just slap on this nose cone, and this gives you an idea of what it's going to do, depression, diameter, number of spares on board that I'm packing, uh, the pre-deployment altitude, so about 40,000 meters, the pre-deployment comes out, deploys for six seconds. So that puts out a uh, drogue chute to slow my descent, and then it deploys a full parachute to stop me. This will automatically cut uh, 0.5 meters a second, which is, uh, this has an um, impact survivability of 45 meters a second, which will uh, keep the Kerbal alive inside, so we don't have to worry about that too much. So we'll stick this back on, there we go. So. If you'll notice, delta V is 1775. Can I get this off here? Yeah. 1775. And if I take that out, delta V has now gone to 1868. So it's all related to weight and mass. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a structural component on, a decoupler. And that's what we use to separate stages with a rocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a Kerbal up. They're going to take some scientific readings and then they're going to land safely back down. We'll need some uh, structural components. Do I have landing legs? I was absolutely convinced I had landing legs. There they were. Where are they? There we are. Okay, so I'm going to put landing legs on. I'll put the symmetry tool to make it easier to put the number of landing legs on. And I slap one there. And that should... Oh, that's on the door for the science lab. Okay, tell you what, we're going to forget about the landing legs. We are going to be fine. We have this atmospheric drogue to pull us down. We do have our externally mounted camera. Hold on, you to display all camera fields if you want. So let's put. Uh, this is another mod. So I'm going to put one camera rotating it. I'm going to look down, see how I'm doing, and I'm going to put another camera pointing up. Does this have? Oh, the beauties! They've modelled it onto everybody else's cameras too just going to leave it there. So that's a rocket. Now you'll notice it's wiped the delta V out. This is when the mods don't like each other. It's not, it's effectively given this, um, sometimes gives it an infinite mass, which means that the um, calculations go squiffy. It decides it doesn't know what it's doing. Fuel moves across a craft, but it has to be connected. So if I have this tank and another tank elsewhere, I can transfer fuel between them. Uh, partially a mod, partially how the system is designed. But if you want to pump fuel in, you've got to have a fuel line that connects to it. You have another resource called monopropellant, which is like condensed air. That lets you steer a craft. I don't have that unlocked, otherwise I'd be showing you that. And that lets you uh, that lets you do micro adjustments with the thing. You'll have seen astronauts. That's what they spray, the white spray. That's monopropellant. It's kind of like just compressed air. So let's launch this rocket. All I'm going to do is take it up a couple hundred feet, a couple thousand feet, meters. I keep saying feet, but I don't actually think in feet. So, here's my untitled spacecraft. We'll call it the uh, Reverb 1, if you like. Be its fun name. So I'll just shut all this down, because we're going to mostly eyeball this one, because I don't need to be... So we have Jebediah Kerman, who is a lady. All right, we go on board. So this is my IVA controls. Uh, I, this is just what I can do. Onboard ship. So, 
uh, set through. So cycle it. So this is my navigation computer showing me my relative uh, my surface speed, altitude, orbital velocity, pitch and roll. Uh, radar altitude as well. Radar altitude is very important. That's my practical altitude uh, over sea level. So I'm 75.3 meters up but I'm actually only two meters up um, because of how actually high I am. So let's have a look. Crew log. Jebediah Kerman. Oh, hang on. Go back to main screen. Oh, I forgot how you go back to main screen. Let's look through external cameras. No signal on external camera. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, external camera one. And so I can increase the zoom if I need to. This is going to be ascent mode. Uh, roll pitch, slope. So my total resources there. That's cameras. And those are working. Okay. Okay, zero. It's just showing all the scripting. <laughs> okay, uh let's oh what do I need on? I don't need an altitom altometer on. I need this. I have a nav ball, but it's always worth having another one just in case. My radar altitude is also displayed here. Uh, this lets me set my velocity. I'm going to enable my um, automatic stabilizers. Uh, I need my resource system set. So where's my resources? Resources, okay. So I'm going to keep an eye on the liquid fuel and the oxidizer. So we throttle up to max. There we go. I don't have to do it this way, I can just use a keyboard, but I like to do that for a second. And what I have here is um, structural, this is my staging system, sorry. So the way the staging is currently working is I disconnect from my fuel tanks, I then fire my rockets, and then I deploy my parachute, which is entirely wrong. That's the way we want it. So without further ado, I'm going to launch. So you see, up we go. Bye bye space program. Now I can't run any of the tests from in here so I'm going to go out and I'll run the test observing the materials base we take off. We get 17 points of science while flying. Now I think that's more than enough. Our radar altimeter has us at Four, five kilometers. I think we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the engines, disconnect the stage. Uh, it was bad to fly at night, and then I'm going to deploy my chute. So I'm still heading up. Still heading up. Bye bye fuel tank. So when I actually get my velocity back. There we go. That's my parachute deploying. So if I kill the external cameras, uh, Jesus, let's get some information. Okay, and current mission time is one minute and twelve seconds. Uh, it's twenty past one in the morning. I'm experiencing half a g. My uh, wet mass is one point one tons. My dry mass is one point four tons. This isn't necessarily relevant unless you're trying to work out your own delta V or get an idea of how much you're going to burn. My latitude is zero. My longitude is 0.74. Ideally, I want my latitude to stay about zero because I want to keep on the equator because most of my um, science is best done there. I'm going to do a quick crew report. Gets me a bit more science. Uh, I'm going to, this is my RCS system, that would be, oh they fixed the buttons, that turns my lights on and off, turns my RCS on and off, that's my SAS, uh, gears, that would deploy my landing gear if I had any, okay we are at uh, 1,100 meters, 1,000 meters rather, so my parachute's deploying, because we got to 500 meters, this shows hundreds, this shows thousands, this shows um, tens of thousands. 
So we'll see as that comes down. My radar altitude's tracking us at 250 meters above the ground. We're currently 300 meters above sea level, so there is a, a discrepancy. Well, we actually have that same information reprinted down here. We're about 50 meters up off the launch pad. The launch pad is 50 meters above the sea level. Uh, mono, uh, sorry. You'll notice we no longer have oxidizer or liquid fuel. That's because I've dumped those tanks. Uh, SAS is active. Lights are off. Let's put the lights on. No, oh, they've locked half my controls. There we go. Oh, that might have been the lab exploding. Yes, yes, it was. All right. Well, that was a pretty terrible landing. Um, when we hit, the parachute exploded. Um, oh no, the parachute's still connected. I've got to reset it. So let's get you out, Jebediah. All right, up you go, Jeb. No, 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 good job, Adiah. Thank you, Jeb. If you want to get up there and reset this parachute, repack the chute, and that would now be ready for me to take off again. Get on board the craft. That's a good point, actually. Let's have a look inside. We should actually be able to see the feed from that camera. Uh, external camera is one, yeah. Zoom in if we want. Can we pan? No, we can't pan. It's a fixed camera. With that, this is the most basic camera. I'm pretty sure with the upgrades you can actually do stuff. And that is a test live Kerbal Space Program. So I will cancel out of here. We go up this lovely button, recover the vessel, and we get lots of lovely science for that crew reports and EVAs. Let's have a look. I've already done some suborbital flights, so we shouldn't get much. Now we've got three science for the report, and we get one science for the flight. And that, in a nutshell, is how Kerbal Space Program works. I'll show you a rocket, but this is going to be quite big. I'll show you a rocket next time.